First of all, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, under Rabbi Nishalayim's map, there are places that are, you know, like Lahavdal, when you look at ways, there are places that are already on the ways, you know. Okay, so that doesn't mean anything. If you have a good schnapp store, it's going to be on ways. But uh, on the Rabbi Nisham's map, BRS is definitely on the map. So many wonderful things come out of this shul. So it's an honor. This is the first time I have the schia to speak in BRS. And it really, I feel very honored to be with the BRS retirement Kailo. It's a wonderful thing that you could choose to do whatever you want with your time and you choose to learn Tyra. Smart people. Smart people. It says, Asher Bocha Abonu Mikola Amin. Hashem chose us from all the nations. It doesn't say Venos Anlonu as a golf course. <laughs> no. It doesn't say Venos Anlonu as a pickleball. Right? I like pickleball, but it doesn't say that. It says Venos Anlonu as Teirasa. He gave us his Teirah. Because ain't Simcha ke Simcha sa Teirah and Talmud Teirah connected Kulam. So, you are making the very best choice that a person could do in their life. Uh, well, before I forget, I want to say that I'm s starting my speaking. Bershus, the remarkable Mordasra of BRS, Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg who I've gotten to know a little bit, and the more I get to know him, the more I'm, I, I'm impressed with his pastoral abilities, with his vision, with his uh, plethora of talents, and you should be very fortunate to have such a rav, and even if you don't dive in here, to benefit from all that he makes available to the Boca Raton community. Um, <laughs> talking about choices to learn, I love to tell a story. And perhaps the Staten Islanders here, Bob and others, maybe they heard me tell this story before. Uh, it's a true story. I, this story happened about 40 I don't know, 45 years ago, 44 years ago. So I was a bacher in Yeshiva of Staten Island, and uh, one of the uh, elder bacherim was getting married. And he was marrying a very rich girl, and the chasana was in Marina del Rey, and he invited the whole Yeshiva. Wanted to have a Lebedic chasana. Invited the whole yeshiva. They sent to the yeshiva a magnificent coach bus with two bathrooms, a magnificent coach bus. And you know, it meant a night of delicious food and everybody went. At the time I was a 12th grader, I didn't even know the chasen. And I couldn't wrap myself around missing a whole night's learning to go to a chasa of somebody I didn't even know. So I decided not to go. I was the only person that made that decision. And I'm sitting in an empty basin medrash. I find out the cook took the night off. He didn't even make supper. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I started thinking that I made a really big mistake. Really big mistake. And I see that Rav Chaim Mintz, the mashkiach of the yeshiva, 
stuck his head into the base of Medrash. And it dawned on me that he is late and he's going to the Chassan himself. Maybe I should ask him for a ride to the Chassan. And I start walking towards him. And he greets me with a big smile. And he sees, I see you're holding down the fort. And he says to me, I once heard from Rav Shach that if you're not sure and you make the decision to learn, that's a decision that you'll never regret. That's what he told me. Now, I, I want to tell you, the sweet breads and the stuffed cabbage that I would have had the chasana, I would have forgotten a long time ago. But that lesson I remember for life. If you make a decision to learn, you'll never regret that decision. All of you have made the decision to learn. It's a decision that you'll never regret. And it's a decision that you'll have nitzchias from. Nitzchias, that's, Torah is nitzchias. What I decided to speak about today, I was just called late last, actually, I found out I was speaking today at 1.30 in the morning. 1.30 in the morning last night, I did one last check of my emails. And I had an email from Reb Shaptoi uh, if I could speak today. And I finally got a hold of his number. Is he here now, Reb Shaptoi? Are you here? No, uh, he's not here. But I finally got a hold of his number. I called Mutti Eisenberger who was in today, he was in Englewood, and I called him, and he had Reb Shabtai's number. I spoke to him late this morning and told him that I would come. Uh, what I want to speak to you today about, since we're starting the Eilu Shmois B'nai Yisrael, so I want to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that's names. Because you should know that one of the reasons why we were saved from Egypt is because we didn't change our names. It's famous Svas Emes, the Svas Emes says, the Svas Emes says that we were saved because we didn't change our names, our language, and our clothing. So the Svas Emes says that those are all Minhagim. Those are not Dinim. They're Hamburg, Kapata, Buttons in the back. No buttons in the back. It's not, doesn't say any of that in Shulchan Aruch. It's a minik. If he has buttons in the back, and then it's a kapata. If there's no buttons in the back, it's a bekasha. If it's down, it's a hat. If it's up, it's a Hamburg. If it's pinched, it's Lubavitch. You know what There's a Roman hagim. Right? Whether you speak Yiddish or Ladino, it's a minik. Names, I'm in Hakim. And that's why he says, that's why people are so careful on Pesach with their in Hakim. Because we were saved because of in Hakim. And a minig is a big thing. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, a minig. It says minig is the same letters as Gehenna. Right? Because a minig, a minig is big stuff. You know? Mig, minig brecht adin. You know, the minig is big stuff. <coughs> So I, I want to talk about names. I have a fascination with names. It's a famous Gemara in Brachis. Lechu chazu mifalos Hashem. Go and see the works of Hashem. Asher sam shamois ba'aretz. Who wrought desolation in the land. Now that's a very strange pasuk. If I would say, coming to New York... You want to see? You want to see things, interesting things? You know where I'll take you? I'll take you to ground zero. That's the Pasuk. L'chum chazum mefalos Hashem. Come and see the works of Hashem. Asher sam shama isbaretz. He wrought desolation in the land. That's the works of, you want to see the works of Hashem? Go see Niagara Falls. Right? Go see the Grand Canyon. 
go see the geysers in Yellowstone. But gosh, there's some shamay spores. Going to go to see desolation? So the Gemara is bothered by this question. The Gemara says, Al tikre shamos el shamos. Don't read it desolation, read it names. You want to see the works of Hashem? Look at names. Look at a, a Goyesha woman called Hagar. And you'll see how a name foretells someone's destiny. Because it wasn't Hagar, it was Hagar, the ultimate girl. She gave up being the princess of Paro to become a cleaning lady to Abraham Avinu. Hagar. But that's not it. Hagar has a very simple gematria. He is 5, Gimel is 3, that's 8, Reish is 200, 208. You know whose gematria is 208? Yitzchak is 208. Why? Because since Sarah gave a rival Hagar, Yitzchak was born. Now also the name Hagar is, comes from the root gear, which means to be contentious, like gira be'ena de sitna. And Hagar was contentious, just like she rebelled against her father's way. When she saw that she became pregnant and Sarah wasn't, she rebelled against Sarah. She had a contentiousness, a contentious spirit. Now later on, she would be called Keturah. And Avram Avinu took her back as Keturah because her ways were sweet like Keturahs. Interesting. Why wasn't she called Nami? Or Nama? She'll say, well, Rashi says another reason. She caught her atzma, she tied herself, and was never with anybody except for Avram. Okay. But I'm going to tell you something else. Yes, yeah, she was pleasant. But only after she got burnt. Only after she was kicked out of the house. And sorry, you humiliated humiliated her, and she learned her lesson. And therefore, she was like the Ketiris, which is only sweet when we burn them. That's why it's Keturah. Yes, Nama. Who do we know is Nama? Oh. Noyach's wife. Isn't it interesting? From Noyach's wife came the whole world. That's why Nama is the same letters as Hain Am. Behold the nation. From her would come the whole world. Now, when the Gemara says the lesson of Shema Garim, the Gemara brings a proof. How do we know that a name foretells the destiny of a person? Shema Garim. And by the way, my name is Moshe Meir. It's exactly Bigamatria Shema Garim with the Kailah. Some, 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 it happens to be. It's, it was, it was, it, it was in me to, to see names. I wrote a sefer about it once, but it never saw the light of the day because, when I wrote the sefer, I was very young and I didn't know how to write. So, it's a sefer, but it's not written well enough. So one of these days, one of these days, I'll rewrite it, but. Uh, in the meantime, you could enjoy with me. You know why it's so remarkable to see the ways of Hashem? Because when you see it in the name beforehand, it precludes any element of chance. Because it was there in the name beforehand. I, I like to tell a personal story where, where I just saw this like so remarkably maybe Morty remembers 
Morty, do you remember when, when my oldest daughter, Chani, was sick? You do remember. You know, it's, she's now 37 years old. At the time that she was six, and it's 31 years ago. 31 years ago, now it's interesting how I'm getting to see so many people. You know, I saw this morning, I gave a dafyoimi in the shtibul in Deerfield this morning. They, they needed, I saw Anchi there. Anchi is there. Huh? He come see, he saw me already today. <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, the, uh, we went away for a Pesach program. I'm not going to tell you which program. And one of our daughters ate a piece of chopped meat that was tainted with E. coli. So that in itself is a sakana. But in one in two million children, it triggers a response called hemolytic uremic syndrome, HUS. And by the way, the one who diagnosed her was Dr. Pang. Uh, and she was very sick. It created sand in her blood and it shut down completely her kidneys. We took her to <coughs> Baby's Hospital Columbia Presbyterian. They told us it's a virus. They're going to keep her alive, peritoneal dialysis. They're going to keep her alive and hopefully the virus will go away. Sometimes Rahman will son, it doesn't. So Mim Libby and I moved into the hospital. We filled it out. Then we had four other children at home. We filled them all out. And, uh, and we lived in the hospital. At that time, I was giving a dafyaimi in Borough Park for about 250 people. And that was the only time I left the hospital. We lived by the hospital. She was a little girl. She was frightened. And I left the hospital. They came with a car from Borough Park, picked me up at about a quarter to nine. The shear was at 10 o'clock. I went there to give the shear. They brought me back right afterwards. At the time, YU sent over two boys every night to stay with my Robertson while I went away. Those boys are already Zaydas now. Uh, five and a half weeks later, she got better. A year later, we made a Suda Saida. And at the Suda Saida, I remember telling my Rebetzin, you know, people like a gematria. Let me see what the gematria of Hannah Weiss is. Now you have to understand, we were saying all throughout the whole time that she'll get better in the schus of the Dafayami. The mysterious Nefesh I used to prepare by her bed. And schlepping, I was so tired because things were going on, schlepping there, schlepping back every night. Chana Weiss is exactly Bigamatria Daf Hayani. Exactly. By the way, if you're checking it out, if you're checking it out, Weiss is spelled Vav Vav Yud Yud Samach. And that's the way we spell it in our family. Chana Weiss is exactly, that's Shmagaram. It, for, it, it precludes any element of chance. So the Gemara says, how do we know Shmagaram? So the Gemara uses as example the name Rus. Because Rus would have a descendant, Sheri Veyu La Kodesh Baruch Hu Beshirais Vesish that would saturate Hashem with songs and praises, and of course that's David HaMelech. So Rus is Riveyu, and it's also embedded in the word Shiraz. It's very nice. Okay. But you know, you learn the Gemara, there's so much more. What's the Gematria of Rus? Reish is 200, Vav is 6, and Tav is 400. So it's 606. Why? Because she was Megayer, she had seven Noahide laws, she accepted 606 more. So that's Rus, Bigamatria is 606, because she would become a convert. It's much more than that. You know, it says, Derech Eretz Kodma Latayra, that you could learn 
Derech Eretz before the Torah. So you can learn Tznias from a cat. You could learn to be uh, productive from an ant. You could learn uh, loyalty from a dove. Because a dove is faithful to its mate. That's a, a yaina. But a tar is even more than a dove. Chazal say that the tar won't marry even after they lose their mate. A yaina will, but a tar won't. And that's why Rus, what was Rus? Rus was the paragon of loyalty. What she said to Nami, where you go, I will go. Where you die, I'll die. Where you'll be buried, I'll be buried. So she was the, the embodiment of loyalty. That's why Rus is the same letters as Tar. Because she was the most loyal. It's all in the name. You take the name Moshe. It's the same letters as Hashem. Because they wrote Panim El Panim Kimosha. Moshe happens to be 345. It's a very easy gematria. So Limosha is 375. Tzipora, says Rabbein Ephraim, one of the Rishonim, is 375. Because Tzipora was slated Limosha. It's, a, it's in the name. But I'll show you something else more remarkable. What's the story? Why was Moshe Rabbeinu chosen to lead the flock? What was the reason? So we know it was a story that Moshe Rabbeinu was a shepherd. And there was a sheep that was, had a fever. And Moshe Rabbeinu saw that the sheep didn't feel good. So he took the sheep and he carried it on his shoulder. And Hashem said, that's the way you take care of your flock. I want you to take care of my flock. So he's chosen from a sheep. That's why Moshe is me from a sheep. It's, it's, it's all there. You just have to look. Everybody knows about Basya. And there are probably a lot of people that will tell you, I know that because she treated Moshe Rabbeinu as her son, even though he wasn't her son, that's why Hashem said, I'll treat you as my daughter, even though you're not my daughter. And that's why Basia is Basko, a daughter of Hashem. That's no. But if you open your eyes and look at Basia, or Bisya as it is in Divya Yaman, you'll see that Basia is the same letters as Teva. Because what did she do? She took the Teva out of the water. A lot of times, a person's very mahus, their very purpose, is blatantly seen in their name. A great example of that is the money-hungry Ephraim. You look at Ephraim. So Ephraim is the same letters as Afaran, Earth. Because that's his whole yichus in life, that he had some earth. Right? And what did he do? He exacted pirain. Ephraim is the same letter as pirain. He exacted payment. Oh, what he could have done if he would have given it to him. Oh, what he could have done. You know, there was a certain person that had a restaurant that I used to come and wait for my Rebetzin and learn somewhere. And the proprietor asked me to eat and learn in his restaurant. And he refused to take money from me. He said to, I said, look, I'll learn in your restaurant, but I want to eat something, I'll pay. No, absolutely not. The fact of the matter is a very smart guy. It says if you feed a Talmud Chacham, it says if you're Makrev Bikurim. No, it's an amazing thing. W you, could you imagine if Ephraim would have given Avraham Avinu the Maris Machpein? 
Can you imagine the schuss he would have had for Nitzchias, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov? I mean, we think about it. Think about it. You think George Steinbrenner was rich? You imagine if you imagine if Ephron would have given Abraham Avinu the Ma'asamach Pela. But Ephron exacted Pirain. Ephron and Pirain are the same letters. But get a load of this. You know what the gematria of Pirain is? Without the vav, because he lost the vav. It's four hundred. Because he exacted four hundred shekel kasef ayvel asaycha. It's all there in the name. It's, it, it, it's blatantly there in the name. One of my favorite names is Yaakov. It's such a, imagine if you were at the bris. So Yitzhak gets up. Everybody's going, shh. He wasn't fiddling with cameras when he spoke. But... So he says, Manu Bechar, Esavel. We call him Esav because also he's complete. Yeah, it says Esav had a beard. He had a back teeth and front teeth. He had molars already, wisdom teeth. So what it says, Kochi Bishani. So also he was complete. And my younger, the Yankala, I have to tell you, in the delivery room, it was really cute. Yaakov came out, and he was holding his brother's heel. It was a Kodak moment. You remember Kodak? <laughs> yeah. It was a Kodak moment. This, I figured that Eilam is old enough to remember Kodak. Yeah. I've so, the people that invested in Kodak. But anyway, uh, so, so, People heard him and they were they were murmuring. What did he say? The heel, he holding the heel, given a numen begin the heel. What's that? What's 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 that? Herbs a heel. So what kind what what kind of name is that? Yodo yoychezes ba keve. So what kind of a name is that? So first I heard an answer from the famous Reb Eli Teitelbaum. Eli Teitelbaum. Some people might know him from Camp Stay Chemed International. But what he was really famous for is all the mass media that we have, TorahAnytime.com, uh, Kalaloshin, OU, you know. What, the pioneer of everyone was Eli Teitelbaum. Daladaf and Dyla Shear, that was the first. Torah Communications Network, uh, he was the first of them all. So he once told me, he said, you know, why did Rivka never have any more children? She was 22 years old when she had the twins. Why? She never had any more children. So we know the reason is, is that when Asaph came out, he didn't want to have any more competition. So he took his heel, he was already very strong, and he destroyed his mother's womb. That's why it says he came out all Edom. Bloody. That's why it's called Edom. Because he this is one of the reasons that Rifka knew the true colors of Asa. Not just because he ran to the church by Yitzray Tzitzvah That's not the only reason. The reason is because he destroyed her womb. And then he saw Yaakov's fontanel. He said, goody. And he took his heel to Stamp down on Yaakov and destroy all the competition. But Yoda Yoycheses Bakev Esav, it was a miracle. Yaakov's puny little hands was able to stave off Esav's heel. It was a miracle. And we name after miracles. Like it says, Eliezer, Elikei Ovi Be'ezri V'yatzileni Mecher of Paro. I don't know if you ever heard of the name Ganesha. Now there's a whole Shiloh how to spell Ganesha. But some people spell it Gimel Nun Shin Hey. You recognize those letters? It's a madreidal. A lot of times in a miracle birth, the cord was wrapped around the neck and all kinds of different things. 
they gave the name Ganesha because Nes Gadol HaYashan. It's, it, it's a name after a miracle. So some learned that that's Pshat and Yaakov. Did you ever wonder why we call the girls' schools Beis Yaakov? So, there are those that will tell you the Pasha Pshat. It's based on the Pasha Koisoy Ma'ala Beis Yaakov is Sagan Lubna Yisrael. And Beis Yaakov refers to the Meitla. That's... I, I, I venture to say it has to do with the Tur's Teretz on uh, why Yaakov was called Yaakov. Now I could say I drank BRS water. <laughs> really gives me pleasure to see such a crowd. Really, it's really nice. Bravo to all of you. Really bravo. Um, the tour said, by the way, he told me that the shear is until 9 o'clock. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 they, Bob, they think I'm kidding. Uh, I know it can't be because I have a daf at eight. So. Uh, the the tour says like this. The tour says that when Asa was born, Yaakov realized that his mother would have to go through another whole set of pain to give birth to him. He didn't want that for his mother. So he grabbed onto the heel that they should come out together to save his mother pain. That's the tur. And when we say base Yaakov, we say girls that are dedicated to chesed and sensitivity. It's a, it's a wonderful tur. It's a tur al chumash. What about the name Yitzchak? So, okay. We, one thing we know is that I heard this from Rav Moshe Scherer, one, one of the greatest askonim, at least in my lifetime. In my lifetime, a man with global vision, a man who no rich person was able to say no to him for a cause for Klal Yisrael. A man a man who built a platform for the G'dayla Yisrael to shine in America for over 50 years. He personally told me that for 50 years he never missed a Mayitz's G'dayla Yisrael meeting in 50 years. And we're talking about the generation of Rav Aaron Kotler and Rav Lazar Silver, then the generation of Rav Moshe and Rav Yaakov, then the generation of Rav Palm and Rav Gifter, he never missed Mayitzis Gedele that terror meeting. So I remember, I used to look forward at the Matzi Shabbos session of the convention. I used to look forward to hear Rabbi Sherez speak. Yeah, he, he was magnificent. So I remember him speaking once. It was in the right town, Hilton. Ramosha was there. There were over a thousand people. They didn't have yet or any time that come and uh, over a thousand people there cramming the halls outside and I remember him asking what's the foulest word in the Torah so people that see you know you, you don't usually get such a question what's the foulest word in the Torah so he said mitzachek because it's the foulest word in the time. He said, okay, Avram and Sarah had a hundred years to choose a name. They couldn't come up with a better name than Yitzchak. That was his question. I remember, I, I remember looking around the audience and everybody's looking like, never thought of that, you know. 
And then he answered with a flourish that the difference is in the tenses. In the tenses. An Arab lives to be mitzachek, to laugh now. A Yid lives to be a Yitzchak. I will laugh in the future. That's the difference between the Yid and the guy. Daniel, I, I just, by the way, all, all kidding aside, I could go to 5 o'clock? Is that? Yeah? Yeah? Shh, somebody sighed relief. He, he realizes 5 o'clock. Oh, Baruch Hashem. Uh, I do also. Minchus 5.30 or 5.35? Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, but from, we should get back to Deerfield easily, right? Yeah. Takes 20 minutes, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the name Daniel is La Adonai. Isn't that interesting? Daniel is the same letters as La Adonai because he was the quintessential Ebed Hashem. The name Bullock is Lakov. To curse, because his whole yichas is he hired Bilam to curse Claudius. Everything is in the name. Rivka is the same letters as Kirba, because Rivka knew all about Yaakov and Asa because what happened inside of her. Everything is in the name. I want to. I want to take a few moments as we end the shir to talk about the Rabbi Shalom's names. Because that's really big stuff. Kulanu Yodei Shemecha To know your names. That's what we say in Bech Let's know Hashem's names a little bit. For example, a very small little name like Kael. The Almighty. Isn't it interesting that no matter which way you read the name El, it means no. Al means no and Lo means no. So he's the God of no? But think, my friends, how do we define might in Yiddishkeit? Ezel Gibar Yitzray. The ability to say no. That's an amazing thing, the ability to say no. Let's take the very small little name of Hashem, Ka. Karibana lam viyomaya. Ka. The Gemara Menachi says that Hashem created Ki Bika Hashem Tzur Oilamim. With the Yud, he created Olam Abba, <coughs> and with the He, he created Olam Azeh. With the Yud, he created Olam Abba, the Gemara Menachem says, why a Yud? Because it's the smallest letter and very few people get there. It says that uh, Rabbi Chayza once met Elio in the Shukha de Bay Left, in the great mall of Bay Left. The mall in Bay Left was bigger than sawmill outlets. It was huge. He asked him, is there a Ben Olam Abba here? And he said, no. Then the Gemara says he saw two jesters, he saw a jailer, but the whole mall, it's not easy to be, you think everybody is smart like you? You're you're me chide skula. How many think? How many people do you think down in Florida are doing what you're doing? A very microscopic percentage. That's why it's the smallest letter. It's the yud. I'll show you something about a yud. I know everybody here loves dick duck, right? Your favorite subject in in school, right? Dick duck. What does Yud do? 
Yud makes something mine. Shulchan is a table. Shulchan is my table. Kisei is a chair. Kisei is my chair. Bayis is a house. Beisi is my house. What's really mine? Only what I put away for the next room. Anything else I don't take with me. It's not mine. Only what I have for Elam Abba is really mine. Famous Meisel with the Rebbe. He's walking in the street with his son. And they have three Bilkalach. And a poor man comes. So the father gives a Bilkalach to the poor man. So then he asks his son, the future Rebbe, how many Bilkalach do we have now? The son says two. He says no. One. The two are going to go in our stomach and then in the bathroom. But the one that we gave, that's us forever. That's the Yud. That's mine. What else does a Yud do? Oz Sholoi Nemer El Oz Yosher. It makes the future. That's Elam Abba. Then you have the hay. Hashem created this world with a hay. Ella told the Shemaim Baritz, Behi Baram, Behe Baram. Torah Tamimah says simply, Why a hay? Why a hay? Because Chamishi mi yodeya, Chamishi ani yodeya. Chamishi chamishi Torah. So that's a simple, Torah Tamimah says different than the Gemara Menachas. He says simple, the world was created for learning Torah. That's why it's a hay. Hay is the letter of creation, Holochem Zora. That's why Avram and Sarai couldn't have children. Avraham and Sarah could. That's why every one of our Imahis has a hay. So you'll say, Rabbi Weiss, you're wrong. Rachel doesn't have a hay. Says the Ben Yoyada, that's why her maidservant Bilha had two hays. One for her and one for Rachel. It's Ben Yoyada. The Gemara says, that the hay is open in the bottom. Because if you don't hold on to the Yiddish kite, psh, you can't cruise control in this life. You gotta hold on tight. Because otherwise you fall to the abyss. So the Gemara says, so why does the hay have a crack on the top, on the left side? The Gemara says, if you want to do tshuva, you could come in through the side. So the Gemara says, but why can't you come in from where you fell? Gemara says, lo yistaya milse, it won't work. Tell a person, he's doing tshuva, he's not going to talk in shul anymore. But he's still sitting with the talkers. Eh -eh. You, you, you want to you wanna be able to, to do tshuva, you have to ch go a different way. You can't sit at the same umbrella table where they're talking Rosh and Haram can't do that. He says he's not going to have any Yehur and Ron, but he's still going to watch all the same shows. <laughs> that won't work. Isn't it interesting that the letter that the world was created with is all about change? Because that's why we were put on this world, to change. That's the main purpose of being in this world, is to change. To be Mishaneh. That's why Neshama and Mishana are the same letters. Let's tackle another name. It's not one of the Shiva Shemas, but it's a name. How many people here grew up in school with the Shiloh, the blue Shiloh sitter? Most people, no? Yeah. The blue Shiloh Sinner. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So that Siddur always had Hashem's name, Yud Yud. What's Yud Yud? What's Yud Yud? So. Right. It's not. It's not one of the Shiva Shem. What is it? Yud Yud says to Devar Aaron, Zech Tzadik Levrocha, Hashem Yinkum Domai, is because we write Yud Kei Vav Kei, 
and we read it Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud. So it's from Yud to Yud. Yud, Ke, Vav, Ke, Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud is from Yud to Yud. That's what he says. But I once heard a story, and maybe I'm going to stop. You know, I figure if I stop early, maybe you'll invite me back again one time. <laughs> I really wanted to go to 9 o'clock, so I'm stopping early. Um, I'm stopping early to cover Bob Bromberg uh, and, and Morty Nyerman. Uh, the, this is supposed to be a halacha shit now? What time? Five o'clock. Oh, okay. I'm not going to take Chas v'sham, would I take you away from halacha uh, The There's a story with the Avis Yisrael, the vision of the Rebbe Zechot Tzadik Lerach, the Avis Yisrael, that a, a boy asked his Rebbe about the name Yud Yud. He said, Rebbe, I have a problem. You taught us that two dots one on top of another is uh, shva, nothing. You also told us that two yuds next to each other is Hashem's name. And you said that a yud is really just a drop of ink because that's why it's called yud. Yud is the same letters as diay, a drop of ink. So how come two drops of ink, one on top of another, is shva, nothing, but next to each other is Hashem's name? Duh. So the Rebbe says, I have no idea. We're going to bring your question to the Rebbe. And that's what he did. He brought the boy over, and he had the boy ask the Avis Yisrael the question. So Avis Yisrael had a tremendous smile. You know, this is why the Rebbe's get to sit in big chairs, because they have these answers. Right? And obviously Yisrael said to him, you see, a Yid also refers to a Jew. We're Yidin. That's, by the way, the reason is because all our national names start with a Yid. Yisrael, Yeshurun, Yehudim. We're, we're, therefore, we're called Yidin. And also because we all have a Chelek in Oilam Abba, and Yid is Oilam Abba. He says, when two Yidin try to get on top of each other and best one another, then you have nothing. It's nothing. When two Yidin live on the side by side for each other, then you have Shechina and you have Hashem. It's Hashem. I want to give you a bracha. You should always be able to learn with Gesund, with full body and sound body and mind. And we should see soon the Mashiach said, Kainu Bimher Vyamena.